my name is Steve Craddy. Welcome to our second video of the year. This is an exciting year for us. It marks our 30 year anniversary. And this is a perfect timing to do a video. Uh, everything is so beautifully awake. We, we got a head start on fertilizing. The sea of junipers have never had such a luster, lustrous green. I especially like our new concept of cleaning out some of the interior foliage to show off these awesome sea of junipers. Uh, these trees are, are, are over 30 years old and they just have fantastic movement. And by just doing this superficial clean out, you can actually see what's going on. We've not made any uh, big decisions on removing branches, so you know the, the tree is still totally yours to mold and to shape into a fantastic bonsai. Before we leave the Sea of Junipers, I'd like to mention that we have Larry Jackal returning on the 30th of this month to uh, do a class focusing on Yamadori. We will actually have, hopefully we will have some Yamadori from the Rocky Mountains as we did last year at this time. Uh, we also have available incredible specimens from the Sea of Junipers that offer a Yamadori look and have lots of carving opportunities. And that's what this, this class is sort of about. We did this class a year ago and it's very, very popular. Uh, we spoke today and it's looking like we will have some, uh, some uh, offerings of Yamadori from the Rocky Mountains. I'm exci very excited about it. Behind me, the beautiful sound comes from Tomi Chimes, made by Tom Zerzaka. We're enjoying these very much this season. And by the way, Tom is, is willing to build these for you. And uh, it's just a very unique concept having mobile chimes. You may remember my excitement on um, just arriving back from California with these black pines and red pines. And I'm even more excited now because they took to their uh, potting from uh, bare root form to uh, a very arid mix. And uh, they're loving it. As you can see, they're, you know, they're forming new growth, new candles, and uh, they're just, they're gorgeous. This is actually my third or possibly fourth time uh, bringing these pines in in this, in this form. And we get better at it each time. Uh, here's a great example. Uh, it has a beautiful, beautiful base with alternating branches. Look at all this beautiful new growth. Just very, very happy tree. I love the base on this tree. This is a prime example of what you want in a Shohan red pine. Look at this base. It's just awesome nabari great alternating branches. This tree's going to be shorter than it is now. Uh, it's just a wonderful piece and it's healthy, very healthy. So excited. The one in front of it is also a red pine and it's formal upright. It's a perfect formal upright. Healthy again. Love to see the candles at this stage. This is an example of what happens here at Plant City Bonsai. My very good friend Lloyd is uh, taking this Prostrata juniper, which was actually a ball of foliage, and he selected the branches that we need to keep, and he's, he has uh, very appropriately changed the angle of the tree and has marked it to where he's going to be putting it into the bonsai pot. I'd love for you to follow me into my garden now. There's lots of trees in here I'm very excited to show you. Again, I have to say the, the excitement is how everything is waking up so, so incredibly. The color, uh, the foliage, all the candles on the pines, the shimpaku, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. Amazing. 
this is like double excitement. I just mentioned how I'm so excited about the new, healthy new growth on these Kyushu Shimpaku. And as I mentioned in the previous video, I was very excited to acquire some, uh, some uh, Itogawa. They're very hard to come by. And uh, I was very lucky to find some very, very nice specimens. And uh, maybe just to uh, show off a couple, this is an Itogawa. And you can see how elegantly twisted it is. This is from Ishii, a gorgeous, gorgeous tree. And this obviously will be a windswept style. Another one, this is sort of a, a sinuous S-curve, slight enough to be believable. It's a gorgeous tree. One of my favorite styles is still the, uh, the windswept literati. Here's a great example. This is the Kyushu Shimpaku. What's nice about this tree, and I probably mentioned this before, is it has the correct movement. It's, it's like it, it, uh, it, it makes the right angle, the correct angle, that is, and just a beautiful piece. I can't wait to see this in a bonsai pot. The two trees in the back I'm very excited about. They are blue atlas cedars. Uh, what is very exciting, I had to have these trees, and uh, it was sort of, uh, uh, explained to me that these are very hard to dig from the field. Uh, the California soil is so sandy that it is, uh, you only get a very tiny root system. And uh, George Miranaka warned me that that's uh, a risk and I, I appreciate him warning me at all, most of the time. I didn't take his advice on these two, I had to have them. And I just think they're wonderful. And they're healthy now. This is another example of the Itogawa that did come in previously with the California shipment. Uh, it is even more gorgeous now than it was when we first brought it in. Uh, uh, this was, is grown by I the Ishii family, uh, Gary Ishii in California. And uh, this is a, a, a uh, concept of you take a understock of like San Jose juniper and you graft every branch onto the tree with with Itogawa Shimpaku. Brilliant. I love this tree. I, I look forward to working on it. Next is something that is just fun to talk about. Uh, I've been in business 30 years and uh, uh, I this is my original bonsai tree sale. The, the first one I ever sold and uh, it was probably eight inches tall and uh, three eighths inch uh, girth and trunk and uh, as you can see it's now a, a beautiful monster and uh, we keep working on this tree it's not one we forget we keep working at it to get it more and more shaped and compacted in it's still a treasure of mine we're leaving the Japanese garden only to enter an even more exciting room the glass greenhouse uh, typically a glass greenhouse would have very few trees in it right now but Mother Nature has, has kept us on our toes and still there's a large percentage of our inventory still in the glass house, so that's where we're headed next. Uh, on, on our way, before we enter the building, here are some examples of the Kishu, Shimpaku, and Itogawa that Mr. Ishii uh, has already potted. Also some more raw materials that are just extra, extra cool. Uh, but you can just see the time. Look at the tree and you'll see the time that's been put into these. You're talking 20, 30, 40, possibly 50 years. Great example is this tree here. I know I showed this one off before. Look how gorgeous that is. Since the last video, I put it in a, in a, in a much more elegant pot. As we enter this room, you see the, the foliage is just so vibrant and healthy green. Um, we have several new uh, ideas on doing uh, single plantings and forest plantings later into the year. So we have uh, uh, trees that have already re reduced root systems. And you, know, you can come in here the window will be open for another month and you can still work on a tree and actually get it into the bonsai pot.
Several weeks ago, I had the most pleasant surprise. I acquired this group of trident maples, and uh, uh, they, were, they were quite interesting. They had taper, they had branches, and uh, what I did not know is my friend Larry Frun actually planted these trees on plates. Therefore, what I was expecting to find root systems going eight or ten inches down into the soil of the bucket, the, the roots were right there at the surface. So these trees were potted effortlessly and totally safely because of his effort to do that. My photographer just mentioned, what does it mean to, that the tree was on a plate? Well, I'll explain that. Uh, if you just plant a tree, a small tree in a container, it's going to uh, send out its roots, and if there's nothing prohibiting the growth throughout the pot, it will grow with sometimes a heavy root straight down. Uh, by putting a plate, I use the term plate, it could be a di maybe a disc is a better description. Uh, as the tree is bare rooted, uh, uh, the plate is inserted and the small roots are just sort of formed around it and then as they, as they grow with uh, great nabari, they are not sending out deep roots. So you have the great nabari and uh, the ability to pot it in the same hour. I'm not going to talk a lot about my redwood forest. It seems like it, it gets discussed in most of the videos, but look at this gorgeous planting. It's never been so healthy. And uh, it's still one of my most admired trees, day in, day out. If you're desiring one of the California apple trees, I'd say this season you should uh, consider, consider one. Uh, the, the numbers are very, very small. Uh, there's still some beautiful trees. Uh, here's an example here. It's, it's still blooming and it's, it's already, uh, the earlier blooms have formed apples. So it's just a, a beautiful tree. And these are not just, I'll, I'll lift this up where you can see that they're not just a straight cut off cutbacks. They actually are old enough to where they have some nice character branching. Uh, very, very popular in my sales. A nice bonus for this buying trip was discovering Nuccio's in California. And uh, uh, we were introduced to plants that I've only seen names of in books and I got to see them in person. And we bought quite a number of them. They're named varieties and uh, they're very, very special. Most of them are like multis or the, the bloom color or size makes it that uh, very intriguing. So I'm very excited about these. There will be an azalea workshop in the near future. Uh, we will put, obviously put that on the uh, website. I think I've saved the best for last. This season has been a blessing as far as purchasing new Kingsville boxwoods. We're very, very low on the Kingsville boxwood inventory. And that's very sad to me, but since that's kind of my uh, signature tree over the last uh, 25 years. 25 out of my 30 years. And uh, we, have, we have trees that are beautiful beginners, which we'll mention in just a minute, uh, up to these two specimens here. Trunk is probably two inches in girth, over 30 years old, in the ground, ground grown. Here's its brother. And just follow me this way to this magnificent row of Kingswolves. We're actually, we're actually potting a pretty nice number of these. I typically sell these as raw material, but when they look like these guys here, uh, they're crying out for a pot, and I couldn't resist it. This is a great size to start with in bonsai, in, in Kingsville Boxwood bonsai. They already have nice character trunks, nice movement, very nice branching. These are true Kingsvilles. These are not any variation of the Kingsville. And uh, they're very affordable. 
and uh, very much recommend these. They pot up beautifully. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. I look forward to talking to you soon, or even better, that you're visiting the nursery. And we do have lots of classes coming up, and they'll be posted on the website. Thank you.